Welcome to Tech Throwback. I've got a special one for you guys here today. Everything from our typical retro tech to a headset that just came out a week ago, we have 30 years of technology on the desk with us today. And we're gonna go through all the changes. We're gonna start off with the oldest one, the Bose Aviation X, and we're gonna go all the way to the one that just came out and uh, talk about all the changes, if this is better, if you need to buy it too, and uh, what these things cost. So today we are starting out where Bose started out. We'll push our A20s and our A30s off to the side and bring in the big dog, the OG, the Bose Aviation X. Now my Aviation 10 is a little bit different than the other two headsets. This was not ordered as a GA headset. The GA ones have a different Bose adapter box that would provide power to the headset. Uh, and if you had the Limo connector one, you would get power from the panel in the airplane, which is honestly a really great way to do it because your headset is never dead. You just can't take your headset and jump in a friend's plane and keep flying unless they were set up for Bose headsets too. These things do blow through battery way faster than the new ones. The new ones run on two AA's and they have excellent battery life. The new A30's battery life is something like 45 hours of noise canceling and 25 hours of Bluetooth on two double A's. This thing, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it lasted me about a week of using the nine volt battery. And that's flying an hour, two hours a day, something like that. So maybe it lasted 10 hours. I, I don't know. That 10 hours might've actually been generous as well. And nine volts, of course, are much harder to find and much more expensive, but that's not Bose's fault. Like I said, panel mount power is really cool. And these things had the option for that. Now, We'll talk about the headset real fast. We have the giant spring for the hinge, and they say that this has a lot of clamping force. I know the clamping force and the weight on your head is a, it's a big topic uh, of the Bose headsets. You know, everybody's like the A30 weighs less and it has less clamping force, so it's easier to wear for long periods. I've never really had much of an issue with these. They don't ever seem to hurt. Uh, these do have the sheepskin pads up top and nice like leatherette pads here and I, I did have to replace all of this because I bought these used. So every piece of this has been renewed. I, I kind of did my own refurb. It's got a new windscreen on the mic. And of course I had to spend 70 or $80 on this adapter here. That's what you have to do when you get the headset for just $200. So got a great deal on these. I don't think the clamping force is too much and I also don't think it weighs too much. Uh, I don't have a kitchen scale in front of me, but we'll just, Compare this to the A20. Try to use the same hand here. Okay, the A20 is a little bit lighter and balanced better. And the A30, I guess you can feel it. I guess you can feel the difference between the three headsets. But I think it's 20% lighter on each one, which means uh, you know the A30 is like 40% lighter than this, and that doesn't seem true. Maybe it's true, but <laughs> all I know is they say it's lighter. Like I said, the weight has never really been a big issue for me. Even the Aviation X is much lighter than like a David Clark or whatever they hand you at a flight school when you first start out, which is basically like construction hearing protection with headphones shoved in it. Um, we've all been there, we've all experienced that, so we know how bad it can be. So anytime you step into one of these Bose headsets, you're like, oh, this is nice. This is how it's supposed to be. Like, This is how the rich people live, right? <laughs> but anyway, this is the Aviation 10. Let's put it on real quick. Oh, it's really comfy with new ear pads on it. These are still excellent today. And I think they came out in 1999, if I remember right. Like I said, I only paid $200 for these. So it was an excellent deal. And then I spent about 170, 180 more dollars replacing everything to go with the headset. So one thing that's cool about the Aviation 10 is it has a very, very small controller. You do have dual volume controls, left and right volume controls, one for each ear in case you have, uh, you know, hearing loss on one side. Some people use stereo configs and put COM1 in one ear and COM2 in the other. Lots of options, and this does give you a way to control the volume for each ear individually. The mic boom is incredibly thick, but it does move right to where it needs to be and it stays put, which is nice. And also it's a big flat mic on this thing. And that big flat mic tells you where it needs to be positioned so you don't have your, uh, you know, your lips off axis with the mic. And the Aviation 10 just kind of worked. 
There's a small on off switch on the controller for the noise canceling. And then of course, since I don't have panel mount power, I also have to turn it on or the auto actually works perfectly on this thing, but I flip it on and the noise canceling kicks in and there it goes. The noise canceling is actually really slow with these old things. It probably took like a full two count before it turned on and started attenuating the outside noises. And there's a lot of static in there as well, but it works and I can't complain. These things have done me well. If you ordered an Aviation X with the GA option, there was a completely different inline controller that could have batteries in it and you would have your dual plug, of course. The Limo connector is a nice little, what is that, a six pin? The only downside to my cheap Aviation X is this giant battery pack that has to go somewhere. So hopefully you got a place to clip it on the side of the airplane. So that is Bose's first generation aviation noise canceling headset. And it's still great to this day. And uh, if you're looking for a deal, that's probably a great place to start. So now let's move on to the A20. This has been the standard in aviation for a long time now. Uh, I don't know if you guys know any pilots that don't own a pair of these. Uh, I fly with a lot of friends and everybody has like four positions and they all have A20s in them already. So when it was time for me to start flying, this is what I was looking for. It's what I was used to and I love it. The controls make sense. It was obviously easy for me to move into and they're comfy. So clamping force, I'm gonna do a little test here. Let's... Okay, these things have a lot more clamping force and what's cool is there's less clamping force, but I think these seal around your ear much, much better. And obviously the better they seal around your ear, the easier it is for Bose to do their noise canceling magic. So we'll throw these on and let's do a quick walkthrough of the A20. They fit so nicely. I have to say, this is a huge step up from the A10. The A20s are an order of magnitude nicer. Now, it's a little bit harder to find the mic position because you have to actually grab and crush the windscreen to make sure you're on axis. And I do find this thing cutting out quite a bit if I'm on the radio and it's not like, you know, touching my lips, which is kind of annoying. I like to have a little bit of space, like just, just give me a quarter inch, just a hair. I don't ask for much. I just want to be able to talk on the mic without running into the mic all the time. But these do work great. Uh, I've never had a problem with them in quieter planes and in some louder planes, like, you know, old beat up 172s, that's where I actually run into some issues. Weight, again, has never been my issue with the A20s. My issue is this gigantic thick cord that it has. Even the A10's cord is like a fraction of the size. I don't know if it's a tenth of an inch smaller, but it's a lot smaller on the A10. And of course, Bose has been singing from the hills that they made the cable smaller on the A30. And they did. And this big bulky cable doesn't like delay. And when you're in the airplane, you're like, get out of my way. I'm trying to like fly the plane. And why is this giant dongle in my way? So that's always been an issue for me because this thing's always sitting in my lap and you got to get everything laid out just perfectly for everything to work without being annoying because you know you don't want you, your arms running into things while you're trying to fly the plane. Anyway, this is the controller. It's dual plug, you know, the standard GA configuration. It takes two double A's. Like I said, battery life is close to what the A30s do. I'd say it's a little less than 45 hours and 25 hours on Bluetooth. And the controller really makes sense. It fits in your hand in a way that you don't have to think about it. If it's dark, you don't need to pull out a light or anything like that to figure out what's going on with your headset. You know by just reaching down and it has this big tapered design that your hand fits on and you know where the volume controls are. You already know the power buttons one down from that. And of course the Bluetooth button and then the switch to go from like mute mix, all the different Bluetooth modes. And on the side, one of my favorite features of the A20 is this little volume control changes the volume on your phone. So if you're flying with music and you need to turn it down, uh, obviously you can just flip the Bluetooth off altogether. Or if you want to leave it on, you can just hit the down button a little bit. I usually fly with mix on and then some music and the music turned down in the background. So I've got some entertainment when we've got some quiet periods on the radio. On the bottom of the A20 controller, there's a wired aux in. So if you have like an old iPod or something like that you like to fly with, uh, you can just throw that into the bottom and it will act just like the Bluetooth, but you'll have to control the volume on that externally. So if you turn the volume way up, you might be scrambling in the cockpit to go find that music and turn it down. This is all kind of solved by like, if you have a Garmin comms unit, you probably have Bluetooth. Uh, some of the, most of the newer comms units have built-in Bluetooth. So you can stream music from your phone to everyone in the plane 
and that actually solves the, the whole problem with Bluetooth. But if you want to have your own music, you can still do that with your Bose headset. So the A20 is kind of perfect. Like I said, my biggest complaints about this headset are like, this wire is too thick and it gets in the way. And also the Bluetooth light is way too bright. The Bluetooth light blinds you at night with the A20. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had people be like, can you just turn your Bluetooth off <laughs> or turn this thing over? So a lot of times I'm fighting the cable to turn this control unit over so I can put it in between my legs so that nobody can see the light. Put electrical tape over it or Sharpie it out. Either way, that is the main issue with the A20. I don't have any real complaints about this thing. It's just uh, slightly annoying that I have to fight off this cable. And this cable just, sure, it looks really flexible when I do this, but it also sits in your lap like this and you're like trying to hold the yoke and you're running into the cable. So you guys can see, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not complaining for the sake of complaining. Bose touted in their marketing that they fixed this. So they also made the headset lighter and it's time to move on to the A30 and test out these claims of the headset being lighter and better in maybe every way. Do you need to buy one of these? These were $1,200. The new one is still $1,200. If you spent 1200 bucks on an A20, I don't know if you need to upgrade to an A30 unless you just want to. And I just wanted to clearly and they fixed I think every one of my complaints. So let's jump in and talk about it. Here we go, the Bose A30, the new kid on the block. And there are so many changes to this headset. Now, the A10, you can see like kind of the frame on this thing was kind of a big old school uh, over the ear headphone kind of style. They didn't change very much. It's got a nice slide, the slide's durable. Everything works on that one. And then it got a little bit sleeker, like the headband is way thinner on the A20 and it's definitely designed a little better. You can see the slide is way different. I put that back where I like it. I'm always three clicks down on these. Another th reason I love them. I know right where it needs to be set up. And both of the A10 and the A20 had the sheepskin head pad there. That is gone on the A30. The A30 has like a velour that's really nice and sleek looking and look how much better the headband looks. It's 100% redesigned. Everything looks better. Hopefully the pivots and the slides and everything hold up just like the old ones, but it seems like they will. They still feel very quality. Obviously all three of these headsets feel like a quality piece and it might be a little lighter. Just holding it for a couple of minutes there. I think it's a little bit lighter. They also hid the spring now. The spring's got a little cover over it and let's, it has less clamping. There's no doubt this has less clamping force probably because it's two separate springs and the other ones are a big single spring. Interesting. So these have like a flat bar rolled into a spring and each one of those use one large spring and this one has a spring here and a spring here. A benefit to that is uh, one of the springs could probably fail and you'd still be able to fly with the thing for a little bit without holding your headset with your shoulder. Anyway, we'll throw the A30 on and take this thing for a quick test run as well. So the noise canceling ports are all redesigned. This headset looks like it's from the future compared to the others. They are doing a great job making each successive headset look like it's way newer. I gotta say, props where props are due, Bose. You keep making them look better. This one looks way faster than the other two. So the mic boom is a little bit thinner on the A30. You can still feel the flat where the microphone needs to be in front of your mouth. And they also put the flat outside. So if you grab the mic here, you don't have to crush your windscreen or get oil on it from your fingers. Uh, you can just kind of go like this and get it set up right. Now, with that said, I'm having like a little bit of an issue with it kind of moving back out. It always wants to kind of go back to its home position. So hopefully the more I use this thing, the more it'll break in and stay in front of my face. That is everything I have to say about the headset. They moved all the ports. You can see the oval port instead of the round port on the side. And the microphone can be moved. It's toolless now. The microphone can be moved on all three headsets. You usually take out like two Phillips screws and then swap it over to the other ear cup. On the A30, you flip two tabs and pull down and then you just pull a little cover off, put the cover on the other side and stick the microphone back in. You could move the microphone in a matter of minutes with this thing. The old ones, you might need to grab a tool or something like that, but you'd still get it done. I don't think a toolless microphone boom should affect your purchasing decision in any way, but 
I, I mean, if you don't want to use a screwdriver for like two seconds, then I guess it could. Again, you can change the microphone boom side on all three headsets and it's no big deal on all of them. So the controller is where things have gotten a million times better. Don't forget about the cable. The cable is thinner and way better and it likes to lay down. Look at that, it already lays down better than the A20 was in just a couple of seconds here. I, I've put it down, it's still kind of rolled up from my bag and it's flat, right where I want it to sit. Thank you. Thank you for fixing the complaints that I never voiced Bose. I'm sure many of you out there were voicing these complaints and I got them to solve all the problems. The panel plugs are actually different on the A30 as well. Uh, the old one has the little ball end on the microphone and this one's kind of a standard tip ring sleeve. The A20 looks a little more aviation oriented with the ball end, but they're standard tip ring sleeve configurations, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the injection molding's a little bit different. These ones have a bit more grip on the A20, and on this one, they're sleeker. On the A30, the cables are, again, smaller and easier to put where you want, so it's nice to have that flexibility. Now, the controller on the A30 is where this headset really shines. It is incredible. The noise canceling, is probably the best I've ever heard. The A10, really noisy. The A20, I don't think there was really any noise that was noticeable while it was noise canceling. This one, when you change the noise canceling modes, you can actually hear less and less noise as you turn it up to high, turn it on real quick, everything around me disappears instantly. High, medium, and low noise canceling settings, like I said, the same volume controls that were there before, but your hand won't automatically find its position other than your thumb kind of sitting on the, uh, the volume dial uh, pop out there, I guess is what we're gonna call that. So you still have your left, right volumes. I always just keep them both all the way up and set the volume in the cockpit. But if you want to adjust them, it's still there and it helps you locate the thing in the dark. Now, the big improvement, obviously, the Bluetooth light is not nearly as bright. they are tiny little flashing lights now. It's not gonna light up the cockpit at night and distract you or take away any of your night vision or bother anyone else in the plane. Bluetooth, the same. You've got your volume control. It controls your phone on the side. It works great. Uh, I've got it synced to my phone and if I, usually the play button pops up on the watch, but if I hit play, the Bluetooth connected immediately when I turn the headset on and it is ready to rock and roll. So that is all three Bose headsets. I think the A30 has nailed it. It's just gotten better and better and better, even if these changes are incremental. Now the A20, like I said, I've kind of grown up with it and it was always great. And it was a big swing when I bought that. And then the A30 came out and I was like, you know what? Why don't I just get the one that I'm gonna keep flying with for the next 10 years? Each one of these headsets has stuck around for almost 10 years. Bose keeps building generation after generation of great headsets and they haven't let us down with this one. Which brings me right back to what I said a few moments ago. If you have any of these headsets, you probably don't need to upgrade, unless you have an Aviation 10 and you need Bluetooth. I mean, I totally understand jumping to the Bluetooth. It is a huge difference. It's one of the nicest things in the plane. Unless you've got comps of Bluetooth, then you know, you're good with your Aviation 10s. But like I said, all the upgrades are incremental and they get better and better. So I guess if you want A30s, go buy A30s and you can still sell your A20s for good money. Obviously secondhand, they will bring, uh, you know, 800, maybe $900. Uh, people buy these things all day long secondhand and it won't be uh, a lot of money to upgrade to the A30s and you know, use the A30s for the next 10 years and then sell those and, and move on to the next one. I think you'll do well either way. Keep playing with what you have, upgrade to the new ones, sell the old ones, all three of these are great headsets. I would fly with any of them any day of the week. With that said, my A20s are going away and I think I'm keeping the A30s and the A10s because the A10 is the perfect backup headset or the Aviation X. I use those interchangeably. I should have probably mentioned that in the beginning, but the A10 is the Aviation X as well. Like I said, I'm keeping the A30s, I'm keeping the A10s, and if I need a backup or if my girlfriend comes with me when I'm flying, we'll have the A10. Uh, unfortunately, she won't have her own Bluetooth unless we've got Bluetooth in the comms. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching Tech Throwback. Don't forget to subscribe, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.